Good morning, it is around 8 a.m. and I'm just heading outside for a quick workout. I'm doing like a 10 minute skip. It doesn't sound like long, but skipping for 10 minutes is around seven, 800 skips. I don't like to overdo it in the morning. I do my main workout in the evening. This is just to wake me up and get my energy up for the day. Hi guys, and I will be taking you through a day in my life. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chilly, and I'm a senior UX designer based in London. There is no typical day in the life of a UX designer because it depends on the type of project you have, and it also depends on what stage of the project that you're in. But I'm just gonna be taking you through what I'm gonna do today, and I'm sure I'll be making more videos like this so that you can see what different stages of the project looks like. So I've just sat down on my desk, it's 15 minutes before stand up and I'm gonna go through my emails and messages and try plan my day before my first meeting. So you supported the PMA, campaign Yesterday I was working on finishing off the design for the validation testing ready to put into refinement today and then today I'm gonna stop All right, let's put in a meeting a little bit later on so we can go through that and then I can hopefully unblock you All right, thanks for catching that I've just finished Stand Up. So Stand Up is a meeting that we do every single morning with the whole cross-functional team. So that is the, there's any designers, myself, engineers, and any product managers, researchers, business analysts. It all depends on how your team is structured. Basically, everyone that's involved in the project comes together every single morning to give updates on what they've been doing yesterday, and then talk about what they're gonna be doing today. And it's also to highlight any blockers. So today, one of the engineers mentioned that a design I created that they're working on is missing a state. And this can happen a lot. So normally we design for both happy paths and unhappy paths. A happy path is just the end-to-end -end flow that you want the user to take. For example, if it is a e-commerce that you're working on, them searching for the product that they want, adding it into the basket, and then checking out. An unhappy path is what happens if what happens if the size is out of stock? You know, the, the whole email me when it's back, that's an unhappy path. What happens if the size is in stock, but while they're browsing, it gets sold out? That's also an unhappy path. So there's a lot of different cases that can happen when you're designing for an unhappy path. And I happened to miss one of the edge cases. And this is where collaborative working helps because your engineers can also catch certain states that you forget about. It's a very, very unlikely edge case, but we still have to design for it. I'm gonna catch up with that engineer in like five minutes so that we can go through that state and I can produce designs to help unblock him because he's nearly finished and this is one of the things that he's missing. Okay, so I've just finished that meeting with the engineer and that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next couple of minutes, just fixing that. The reason why it's gonna only take me 10 minutes is because we use a design system, which is a pre-made library of design styles. 
so that everything is very consistent. So I'm just gonna pick and choose what we normally use from the design system, add it to the design. So hopefully that will only really take me like 10 minutes to get done. getting a design ready for some validation testing. Validation testing, otherwise known as fake door testing, is when you build part of your feature out, but only a little bit of it, to see if people actually click on it. And that is to actually test if people will use it or will subscribe to it. Because sometimes what people say they will do is very different from what they'll actually do. Features that need to be put through a validation test are ones that you know will be expensive to run or expensive to produce. It's good to validate if customers will actually pay for this and that will tell us if this is a project that's worth pursuing. So you want to make sure that by building it out, you're going to get a good ROI because it's one thing for people to say they want it and they're going to pay for it. And there's another thing for people to actually do it. So we created a landing page um, explaining what the feature is and a subscribe button at the bottom. We are then going to expose this to, I think, 10% of our user base. So that's a few thousand users. And we've got a target number of how many users we need to click the subscribe button in order to see this test as a success. If this test fails, it's still not really a failure because what it's done is it's saved the company a lot of money in building out the wrong feature. This is an example of a validation testing landing page for an app. It's very simple. I've just taken out all the text and replaced it with some placeholder text. On the app homepage, we'll have a banner pretending like this feature exists and then when the user comes into it you have something like this where it's like try a new feature and then you break it down step by step explaining what the feature is so here's an example of a three-step breakdown you receive a notification and we go into details of what the feature does and then explaining how it will save the user money or time or some sort of value proposition here and then you have your price for subscription and then they press subscribe and then when they press it, we obviously let them know, thank you for your interest, but this feature is not live yet. And we explained that was just a test. And if enough people press subscribe, we use that data to verify if we should go ahead with this. It might be a good feature that a lot of people want, but you have to remember that the business also has to make money. So do people want it enough to pay for it? Do they see enough value in it to pay for it? After designing something like this, I would then hand it over to the engineer and then they would start working on it, implement it in the app, and we would release it to a certain amount of people, like an A-B test. Before I got to this stage, I can take a step back to explain to you how we got here and explain a bit more about what validation testing is and why we do it. So I've got a video that talks about the UX process and I show this diagram. Go back and watch that video to get a deeper understanding of what these stages are. But for what I'm going to be showing you today, this is a better example of the UX process. You have your research, define, design, prototype, validate. So we're in the validate stage, so we're here. And then once you're out of this stage and you're happy with your results, you can then go into build and QA testing for the engineers to test that the new build doesn't break the current app when they add a new feature, and then they launch it. So I'm going to take you back here just so that we understand how we got to this part. So for research and define, I'm gonna show you an old project I worked on. This is where you talk to customers and understand what their needs are in comparison to what your business is. So here is an example of a research document that we would have to try and make sense of talking to customers. We would talk to around eight to 12 customers and we would use our personas to make sure that we are talking to the right people who are aligned with the business. If you don't have personas yet in your business, that is a different type of research stage where you do research just to create your personas. You then use those personas to recruit a specific type of user 
that is aligned to your business customers that you're trying to reach. I think in this case, we probably talked to around between eight or 12 to try see what their needs are around the business goal that you're trying to solve. You're trying to match user problems to your business goals. So this is what it would kind of look like. This is when I worked for an energy company and looking at how users manage their electricity costs and what kind of products that they are investing in to try to reduce their bills. So once you've talked to a number of people and you're grouping certain answers or certain concerns together, you then get an understanding of where you need to be looking at. So these are all the different groups that we put together. So for example, looking at how do people find the information, you then analyze this information to see where your product as a business could align with what people are doing or where people have needs. For example, here, one of the biggest groups here is comparing options. People spend a lot of time to compare. So in this case, we then looked into how we can help people make those comparisons a bit better and how we compare to other businesses and make sure that we come up really well when people are comparing. That is an area where we could start maybe generating ideas and creating designs around that. So that is how you move from research to define and then to design. And then you can prototype and test. So when it comes to testing or validating, most of the time we focus on usability testing, which is where we show the users the prototype, see how they move through it. Do they know where to click? Can they reach the end goal? However, there's a type of validation testing that's not done enough in my opinion and that is testing for desirability. Testing for desirability is to see if people want it and do they want it enough to pay for it. And that is very important because remember, you're working for a business and they need to make a profit. Once you've done those workshops and you've come up with the idea, how do you test for desirability? We use a test card. You can just find this on Google, just Google UX test card. This is to help us understand if we're on the right track with our design. So for example, very simple design that we're going to show to a few thousand people and see if they subscribe. So if we go back to our test card, you're going to have your hypothesis. So we believe that whatever solution you have will help users do X. To verify it, in this case, we're going to show this landing page to X many users to see if they subscribe and measure the subscription numbers. You also have to have a goal. If we expose this to maybe 3000 people and we need 30% of them to subscribe, we know that when we release it to everyone, around 30% of people are gonna want it and that will mean that this design is profitable and viable for the business. So after we've validated, we then go back and design the feature out properly and then create a prototype and test it for usability and go through this loop again. Once we finish that, hand it over to engineers. We hand it over during a refinement session and then they build it and then they test it and then we launch it. So that is essentially what I'm working on at the moment this week, just creating these tests for certain features to make sure that we are on the right track. I'm about to go into a meeting, which we call refinement. So in this meeting, this is where I'll essentially be handing over my designs to engineers. We'll look at my designs, we look at all the flows, make sure that all the different edge cases are there and the engineers can break down what is needed to build this designs, allocate each part of the designs to the right person and plan ahead. This is in preparation for our next sprint. So we look at our backlog of tasks and we prioritize them, look at what we're bringing in to the next sprint, and we break them down and clarify them. We also look at how bigger tasks can be broken down, who takes on which task, and making sure that they're ready to go into sprint planning. The sprint is a set amount of time that is set to complete a certain amount of projects. In most cases, sprints will last two weeks. For, for each sprint, we have a goal to be like, for this sprint, we're gonna build X, Y, Z, and that, that allows us to focus for two weeks to build whatever we set out to build. And then at the end of that sprint, we look back and see what went well, what went wrong to help us then become more efficient in the next sprint. So essentially this refinement is in preparation for the beginning of the new sprint, which will be on Monday. So today is Thursday, 
we're refining everything tomorrow on Friday where it'll be the end of the sprint we're going to do like a sprint review where we look back at how we can make it better in the next sprint so it is the end of the day for me I hope you enjoyed getting an insight into my day if you have any questions about this working process please put it down in the questions below and if you'd like me to make more of these videos please let me know in the comments so my normal evening routine after this is to walk to the gym and get a workout but today is a little bit different i'm going to be speaking on a panel at google so i'm going to be taking you with me this event was a partnership between ysys and google for their ux course where they sponsored i think around 30 students to take the course and this was their graduation ceremony at the end that is Debbie, the founder of YSYS. And then there was an industry panel where I gave some insights and advice about what it's like to work as a UX designer. But one thing when I was working that used to frustrate me was how subjective design can be sometimes. So one thing I I enjoyed learning about when I first heard about UX was just about how data driven it was and how it was based on research and. I've just gone home and I am exhausted. I'm gonna get ready to go to sleep. I hope you enjoyed spending the day with me and I will see you in my next video.